Hi everybody. In today's video, I'm going to show you the future of C Sharp programming in Excel. If you've ever worked with C Sharp in a NuGet package called EPP Plus, you will probably like this because my package called datajuggler.accelerate is built on top of EPP Plus, but you never have to refer to cells. You get to work with C Sharp codes. So I think you'll like this. Let's stick the C. Let me explain briefly what we're going to do here. One of my clients sent me this tonight and asked for it and he didn't want to program. He just wanted this done quickly if I could possible. So it's only got about, I think, 4,000 something rows. I already sorted it before the video started, but I'll just go down here to the end. So it's not too many, but it's about, yeah, 4,000 something rows. So I'll go back up to the top. And okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to my site called Blazor Accelerate, and we'll go ahead and go there right now. Just wanted to show you what we're doing before we start. So this is my site. It is called accelerate.datajuggler.com is the URL. If you want to uh, pause the video for a second, or I'll put that in the video description. But I've already got this here. Now I typed in my namespace. You can put in whatever you want for your namespace. Let's let's start over. Let me go to here. I'll just go to. Uh, I'll use. Okay. So I'll go to accelerate. Okay. So the first thing you do is type in your namespace you want to use. So I'm going to use sales tax codes or something. Okay, and then upload Excel. So I've got my Excel, and make sure you save your Excel as a .xlsx, so it won't work if it's just the .xl xls. So, and you'll see, you know, if you have more than one sheet, select whichever sheet. But I only have one, and all you do is click Generate uh, Class. I'm gonna go ahead and hide my instructions. I'm a little off on my estimate here, about two weeks late, but it was December. I keep moving it off. All right, so we're going to generate our class, so that doesn't take very long. We'll go ahead and save our class here. I'm gonna. I've already done this, started this video before I started recording, but I'll save that. Now we're going to come over here. Let me go to my temp folder, and I should have deleted my temp folder before we started, but I'll just extract all here. Okay, so I've got my Excel class. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to copy this. And I'm gonna go. I'm gonna create a project. So let's go to my C drive projects. And I'm not gonna put this in GitHub because it's one of my clients' projects. But I'll just put it right here. So that is. Uh, we're gonna create a new folder. We will call this uh, sales tax uh, summer. Sales tax totals. That's fine. Okay, let me in here create a little folder called documents. Alright, so we don't lose our little file. Now we're going to open up Visual Studio. So sorry for the. Took us about three minutes to get to Visual Studio, but not doing too bad on time. So we're going to create a new project. It's going to be a Windows Forms app. If you don't have Windows Forms here, just type it here. Windows Forms. Next. I'm going to put mine in that directory I just created. So projects. Uh, what did I call that? Sales tax totals. And we'll put it right here. And we're going to call this sales tax totals is fine. I think that's what I, what did I put for my uh, sales tax codes? We'll go with that. Sales tax codes. Okay, and yes, .NET 6 and create. So we have our project and I'm going to get a sip of beer. Okay, so now we're just going to do a few things that I do to every project. I'm going to rename this to main form. Don't really have to, but it's kind of a old habits die hard. All right. And now F4. First thing I always do is turn auto scale mode to none. Then I want my background 
image layout to go from tile to stretch background image I'll uh, you can use any image you want I have a little textures folder and I I always like to use this black image right here because it's got some little speckles okay and now we're going to change the text on our well first we'll do our font while we're here I just like to use Verdana oops I can't type Verdana and 12 so I can see it because my vision's not great all right used to be a professional pool player or broke pool player whatever you want to call it and now I'm glad I got a job all right and we'll call this uh, sales tax calculator or something it's just a it's not really the the sales tax amount he just wants a total of these codes I think I didn't see any other data so all we're gonna do is add some NuGet packages so the fun part begins NuGet sure makes things easier all right first thing we're gonna add data juggler dot win dot controls that just gives us a couple of things we need and then we're going to add data juggler dot accelerate there okay and we'll install that okay and I accept whatever I just accepted. All right, so let's see if everything still compiles after all that. Didn't really need to close that, but we should all be compiling. All right, so let me bring our little form back here and close everything. Okay, so here's why we added, and I'm not even gonna put an icon, which is really hard for me, so I'm trying to go as fast as possible. Okay, so we're going to add what's called a label text box browser control. And this is part of datajuggler.win controls. I probably need to work on it a little bit to make it start off with the right everything. But if we change the theme to wood and then right back, that brings our label color back. So that needs to be probably fixed. And we're going to go with label text is just going to be, we'll just call it file. Doesn't really matter. We're going to erase our label text, I mean uh, the text itself. Okay, now this here is just wired up already. If you're browsing for a file, you just click the little button there and it'll browse for the uh, you know file for you. Okay, so we have that. Then the only other thing we need is a button. Alright, now we're going to change our theme on our button to dark gonna go with button text and this is an open source project if you want the uh, data juggler .win controls and so is accelerate so all right money just seems to be one of those things that I just need and don't seem to focus on making uh, and we're gonna just call this uh, sort and total well uh, what's probably the word let's think of it. we'll just call this total Okay, and that's uh, we're gonna make this button a little smaller because that's kind of a weird size that always defaults to. So we'll go with about 120 and 48. Line this up. Go right here. We're gonna change our font of our button just to make it uh, bold. Don't really have to, but I think okay. I've got auto scale. That's a bug in Visual Studio, not net six, but we're not going to complain because the price of Visual Studio is right. All right, and we're just going to call this total button. Okay, and that is enough for us to build everything. So we didn't really need this whole form, but we could go a little smaller. I'm going to put a graph here, but I have a feeling this is going to run so fast that. The graph is going to take me longer to build it, than, uh, but we'll just put a little progress bar down here and go to common controls or progress bar. Okay. And we'll call this, I always call it graph, it's just short, short and sweet. And we're going to make it invisible to start with. We'll turn it on once we show it. And then the only other thing I'm going to add is a little label, just to give us a little info label here. I'm going to call it info label. 
turn the auto size to false because I've never once thought that was a good idea and back color to transparent and four color to lemon chiffon and label t and text to blank and text align we're going to set to middle center okay so we have everything there we are ready to wire up our button so so far not too hard here anything uh, no rocket science here all right and now our click button okay now here you may or may not want to do this but this is one of my uh, favorite well this is first thing we're gonna do is fix our dotnet 6 I don't like this new nullable thing that comes with dotnet 6 so we're just gonna go right to disable I know you can do that another way but let's uh, unload project reload project okay I just don't like that just bugs me if they think that was needed but that's another story okay now this is something you may or may not want to use but I'll put the link to the video description to this this is a product called this is a Visual Studio package called Regionizer. I'm going to hit Format Document just because I uh, like everything. And I realize now that I've got .NET 6 has uh, global usings, but we're going to just forget about that for the next five minutes and we'll be done. So we're just going to say using datajuggler.win.controls and then we're going to say using datajuggler.accelerate. Okay, and I think... Oh, one more using data juggler dot ultimate helper and that was installed by both of these two share ultimate helpers kind of my shared class library for everything and I'll show you that as we go now here's something you may like about regionizer has an auto commenter if I just hit control shift there that types that for me but you may, never, may not care about that so now we have everything needed. All we need to do is we're going to add our class. So we're going to add a folder here. And we will just call this oh, uh, data. Okay, sounds good. It's my first name. All right, now we're going to add an existing file, but we'll just open this folder in File Explorer. We're going to go up here to this little file that I copied earlier into there just to give us a place to put it. Oops. Data. Okay. So now if I open up data, we have sales text codes. Let's make sure that's what this is. Sales text codes. We're good. Okay. So now. I should be able to do this and I haven't loaded one of these things in a while so I gotta make sure I can do this Excel data loader hang on do I have any static load we just want to load um I know what we want okay load all data that's what we want workbook okay sorry it's been a while since I I work with my own package I wrote this but that was a couple of months ago uh, load all data and all we want is the path and that's going to be our control and that is going to be label text box browser control one dot text which we're going to rename right now selected right sorry okay and we're just gonna call this uh, browser file browser apply okay so now load our workbook if workbook dot has worksheets actually we can just do this this is I'll show you this is part of ultimate helper has one or more items and I can just say workbook dot worksheets and that tests for null and make sure you have at least one because we're only gonna have one worksheet if it loaded 
So, and I can also hit Control Shift there, but I got to take that out for one second. I'm just cheating here for one second. Ah, hang on. I'm taking this out to my clipboard for one second. Now hitting Control Shift. I need to fix my auto commenter to handle that if there's an object there. But anyway, continuing on, getting a sip of beer. Sorry, pardon me. Okay, now we have, uh, we're going to call this worksheet. And this is uh, equals workbook dot worksheets workbook dot worksheets zero okay so get first worksheet and I can't type there but you know what I meant okay so and we're, we're just going to test if our worksheet that's just like saying not equal to null. The only advantage is if there's multiple, you can just put a comma there and just sorry, I'll show you real quickly. You can just put a comma there and compare up to five, but we'll continue on. I've got an auto comment there for if the worksheet exists. That was control shift. Okay, so now we are excuse me, we are going to load our whatever our class is called. What is our class is called Excel. That probably wasn't the best name. Kind of. Alright, we'll just go with it. That was a pretty dumb name to chose, but we'll just go with it. Alright, so back over here we're just going to say Excel. Uh, actually, it's List Excel. I hate the name I chose, so sorry. We'll just go uh, Excel list equals uh, Excel dot load, and we just pass in our worksheet. Okay, load our Excel list. Okay, so far, does that have your attention there? That looks pretty uh, easy, doesn't it? Even though I didn't make it very easy looking. Okay, so now we're just gonna do our little test. If list helper dot has one or more items, Excel list. And what we're gonna do on our very first test, I just wanna see how many we found. So we're gonna say info label dot text equals Excel list dot count. And we'll We'll just say uh, items found. Okay, so let's see how we did so far. We're 18 minutes in, so not too bad for writing an entire program, although we haven't finished yet, but we'll probably be done in five minutes. Okay, there's one more thing we need to do. Sorry, I forgot to do this. When we had the designer open, Hit F4, window state. I mean, the startup position is going to be center screen. So, there. That should be the default to me, but Microsoft doesn't agree with me on everything else. So, why would they start now? Okay, so now we have our little screen. We're going to go to my temp folder. I am going to browse. I got too much stuff. Obviously, I'm working on stuff. I should have... Uh, Lead in my temp folder. Let's go do that really quickly. Okay, temp. And the only thing we want to keep is that. So we'll get rid of everything else. Actually, yeah, that's fine. I was gonna say, okay, so now try that. That's easier to find. Total. 4,084. Okay. I don't want you to uh, toot my own horn or anything, but that's pretty good. Hopefully you thought that was cool, as bad of a video this has been so far. But let me show you, uh, just to show you a little more about what we did. This is our Excel class. So for each, uh, you know, there's two columns in our Excel spreadsheet here, product number and product 
quantity shipped. I didn't even have to do anything. It, it knows to take the spaces out and it shows you the, this is the same code generator from datatier.net. It's part of NuGet package datajuggler.net. It's called C Sharp Class Writer. And that's how I built all this. But in each row has its own GUID and that way if you need to update a row. But I still think you would think that was pretty cool. Now we get to write our little logic. So I just wanted to make sure we were uh, able to load our Excel spreadsheet from memory. I haven't done this in two months, so I was kind of happy that worked. But now we are going to do our little processing. Okay, and I'll just change that from a test to display count. Test passed. Pat self on back. Okay, continuing on. Now what we're going to do, we already have our list sorted, but what we want to know for each of these, we're going to build another class that's an instance of this Excel object. And this, and what this is going to be is only the items that are unique. So we're not going to count duplicates in this one. So we're going to have to write like a get, just to check and see if the name is the same. So what we're going to do now, we're going to say uh, for each Excel and Excel list, okay. I'm going to hit control shift for, for my auto comment, thanks to regionizer. Just, uh, I used to work somewhere where you had to turn in a comment for just about every line, and that's why I wrote that. All right, so now what we're going to do is we want to uh, see if, if Excel dot product number, we need a variable. So we're going to come up here to our little method here. We're just going to say local string last product number. Alright. And now we'll say if Excel up <clears throat> actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if text helper dot exist uh, last product number. And the reason why that's off is Visual Studio started cursing me in Visual Studio in 2015 because they don't like regions. So that's what that's. I need to. I was. It's a bit on my list to write a little utility that fixes that. But we have it here. So what we're going to do now. Okay, we wanted to make sure that exists because the last product number is not going to exist for the very first one. So we're going to do an else here. Now we're gonna create a list here up in our locals. And this is just gonna be unique um, items equals. Okay, so we have our unique items. So uh, the last product doesn't exist. What we wanna do is just say unique items dot add excel add this item okay so we have this and now what we're going to do after a sip of beer pardon me <clears throat> we are going to cut a long day really sorry this isn't a very polished video but a client wrote me after work and asked for this so I thought I would make this video show you accelerate because it's really cool and make me $150. So, continuing on, what we're gonna do is if text helper dot is equal last product number, excel dot product number, then that means we're continuing on with the same, uh, well I need one more variable. And that one more variable is current item. Okay? And current item is just 
going to be the one we're currently on. Current item equals Excel. And again, I hate that name. Sorry, I should have chose a better name for that. That's what, that was the spreadsheet my client sent me. Had Excel, that's where that came from. I could have changed it before I code generated, but that's okay. We're just moving on. So, if the name is the same. The reason why I use text, help, text helper dot is equal because by default it's got some other overrides for case sensitive and other stuff but as it is I like not doing case sensitive searches. So we have, um, so if it's equal what we are going to do and we're going to say current item dot product quantity shipped plus or equals which just means to add to uh, excel dot product quantity ship so add this item to the current item we don't have to do it for the first one because that one already has its own uh, total so we'll have right here uh, set the current item now what we want else this means this is a new you know we're our, our list here is already sorted let me make sure I've saved our list but okay so that way if we come to a new item we know we're it's time to get a new current item so we're just gonna say current item equals Excel set a new current item all right and now this will uh, basically go all the way through. We're going to set our graph up here. So we're going to say graph.visible equals true. And then now we are going to say uh, graph.maximum equals excel list.count and graph dot value equals zero okay and now at the bottom of each uh, iteration we'll just say graph dot value plus plus I can even this is a auto comment sorry control shift and that uh, typed that for me so all right, so I think we are ready. Now at the end, what I want to do, I, I want to do one more thing because my client didn't want, usually I they asked me to send them a little Excel program because they do things quarterly, but this apparently was a one-time little one-off program. So he didn't, he said he didn't want a program. He just wants me to build the output for him. So I'm just going to send him back his same sheet with another sheet. So to do that, I'm going to use a string builder. So we're just going to go create a string builder up here. Okay, I need to add a reference to system.txt. Okay, go back down here. String builder sv equals new string builder. All right, so now for each row, what we are going to do, we, well, first we want to finish totaling. It's what we're going to do before I even start our string builder. I'm going to just display our unique items count because I just want to make sure how many unique items we get just to give us a, so let me make sure where we're at. Yeah, right after this for loop. I'm just going to say info label dot text equals unique items dot count and I'll change this to uh, items found I'll put unique items plus alright looks good and we'll display alright test only I do a lot of interim tests just to make sure before I go any further. Sometimes I go further, but looks like we're doing okay. We're 30 minutes in, so we ought to be able to. Okay, unique items, that is not the correct total. So 
let's uh, figure out what's going on. Hang on. Last product number. Oh, no, I didn't set. Last product number. equals excel dot product number okay that's why computers do what you tell it <clears throat> not what you want okay so sorry we're <clears throat> cruising right along here try this one more time okay we're gonna go with no <laughs> so Hang on, let's go see what's going on. We'll we'll step through it this time. A lot of times I just kind of zip through it if it's going to work, but if it's not going to work, I got to actually go through here. So let me uh, last product numbers excel dot product. Oh, we got to do this one more place. Anytime we set the current item, we have to set the last product number. Okay, I think that was our it. So now I just run it and we'll see. I should step through it like I said I would, but if it works, I'll step through it later. Okay, we're going to step through it. Okay, so far we're uh, batting a 0 for 2 here, but we'll uh, try this. We'll, we'll actually use one of these things called a breakpoint. I only try to use those if I think it's not going to work. All right, so select our little file. Okay, sell list just to make sure 4,000 items. Great, current item. All right, sales tax code. That is our first one CLP, just to get our first one CLP. So the next one should also be CLP. So let's see what's going on. Current item dot product ownership. Okay, so that should be three, which is one and two. I can do that math. We're there so far. Okay. No, different. It's a new item this time. Current item equals Excel. Oh. I know what we got to do. That was the problem right there. Okay. Unique items. I could have written this a little differently, but the first one, I was just handling the first one slightly different. But okay, now watch. That will, that will actually give us our total. We have 251 unique items. So now that we have our values everything we need all i need to do now is paste all this out into another spreadsheet so we're going to use the magic of string builder so one more sip of beer we're almost done by the way if you're still here still not bad for an entire program for probably 40 minutes is where we'll be so what we're going to do is every time we're going to first we, we finished our little row here I really didn't need this but I'll, I'll leave that text for there now what we're going to do for each Excel Excel in unique items it's a different list so that other Excel variable up there is in a different scope so we should be able to do that but if I'm wrong I'm wrong a lot so I've got undo for everything I do and I still get paid. All right, so now what we're going to do is very simply SB, which is our string builder, dot append, and we're just going to put uh, Excel dot product number and then number, add a tab environment dot tab okay we'll just add a, I think it's just I think that's what it is if it's not we'll see and then we're going to do sb dot append 
product oh uh, sell dot product quantity ship that's our total because we just added to our total for each one add this item and now we just want sv dot append environment dot new line all right so that gives us add a new line now we come down here string excel to copy equals sv dot to string or actually that's excel to paste technically all right get the text to paste and now we just do the fun part of clipboard dot set text i could have written this to excel i've got other Accelerate has built-in stuff to write this out, but my client didn't ask for it. They just, I mean, I, I don't need it to, this is a one-time thing, so we're just going to say uh, Excel to paste. And then we'll just write info label dot text equals done. All right and set the text so let's just see how we did i'll put a uh, your text has been copied to your clipboard i'll change that to the i don't like to have the same word twice the text has been copied to your clipboard all right let's just see how we did any luck i did it all on the first take basically so let's see where are we at 36 minutes not too bad if I did that I was hopefully my client doesn't watch this video <laughs> After, what do you mean three hours I spent three weeks on accelerate so not like it's not like I'm a the text has been copied to your clipboard sometimes I'm good I don't want to toot my own horn but every once in a while we're just gonna add a new uh, sheet here and we're just gonna call this totals and we're going to add a column here that uh, will copy the column product number. Well, first I'll get this off of my clipboard. So going back to this one, not supposed to be totals. There. Okay. And now we're going to insert a row. Go back over here. Oops. Copy. Go to totals, format our stuff a little better, and check our work just to make sure a little bit. Looks like uh, let me go down to our 251 here, 242. We'll just check the last one and the first one, and that's too far to scroll down. Sorry, I think I'm. I think I'm done so as far as y'all are concerned. I'm just kind of checking my work before I start billing somebody. I want to at least give a little bit of a proofread of what I did. Oh, it's way down there. Okay. Any day now. All right, here we go. So we'll check the very last one. And I'm sure there's a built-in Excel way of doing this, but I didn't even want to Google it because I didn't want to know it. All right, let's just do a sum of equals sum uh, B4052 and then Two forty-two, and what did our total say for that last one? Two forty-two. I think we did it, folks. Okay, so that was my short video, or not too short, but forty minutes. But for an entire program, I think you'll find that was a pretty easy way to work with Excel. You never have to work with sheets. You know, you get to do everything with like C sharp. That's kind of what we're good at. All right. Well, thanks for watching and let me know if you think Accelerate is cool. I've also got a demo uh, where you can do data entry, you know, use like Excel as a database. So if you look at the WinForms, it's uh, Accelerate WinForms demo. It's on the Accelerate website. All right. Thanks for watching. That was my 40 minute video. Maybe you'll find that uh, useful. All right. Peace out.